Right guys, here we are. We're at the Micon home planet. Let's convince them. Tell them that we definitely need to get them away from this planet and get to the new one. Jekyll Wap is all omni-existent, spreading and changing the non into Jekyll Wap. You are non who must become Jekyll Wap or Boyd. We are the agents of Jekyll Wap. We are the Micon. Micon, there is a world at the Star Organon. It's perfect for your deep children. Go there now. So your we can destroy you. Is appropriate. Acceptable new worlds are a priority for the rapid and complete spread of Jekyll Wap. We wish you to know more for our suitability assessment. Tell us of this world. The air is pure and sweet. This is good. Abundant life covers its surface. This is good. And the sun gently warms the surface. This is good. If your words are true, we will gladly spread Jumbo Wap to a new world. We will assemble the burning fleet and send them to this planet. We will send many ships to protect the children as they grow. You have been of service to us. Your insight into the ineffable Jumbo Wap is encouraging. Perhaps. If we were to plant spore sacs in your brain organ and let its tentacles spread through your flesh, then you would truly understand Jekyll Wap, become part of Jekyll Wap. You would be happier and more fulfilled. Consider our offer. Oh, they're so gullible, aren't they? Okay, let's get away from this place before they realize what we've done. I mean, is that. Are they all. Oh, no. Didn't mean to do that. Guess there were just too many Micon just trying to escape the orbit of the planet. Um, we are the Micon. Yes, we are aware of that. Are they going to be really hostile for no apparent reason now? I bet you. I bet you they are. Can we just go? Is that okay? Oh come on! To be honest, that was probably a bad choice on their part because, uh, well, we're just going to destroy them pretty quickly here. I mean, we can, we're quicker than their stupid laser things, their bullets, what they are, sort of plasmoids. Uh, we just need to get in close range and just uh, obliterate them in like one shot. Here we go. This is the end for them. There we are. Destruction, no crew lost. Quick battery and smash the asteroids! Uh, that was close. Come on, we can do this. Destroy them. Quick. Get them out. We can do this. Oh, nice. Another one down. So two. Michael's down. Uh, that we go. That was it. 524 IUs. Thank you very much. Not that we don't have enough already. Uh, let's just get away before they all start to get really annoyed with us. Why are they suddenly so hostile? I don't even understand the Micon. They're just so weird. They just, They just don't think... Okay, so there we go. We have uh, successfully uh, tricked the Micron into thinking that it is a good idea to go to Organon, which is of course where the ambush is going to be. We're going to like ambush them. It's going to be amazing. Um, so yes, might as well you know go to Earth now. So where is Organon? Okay, so uh, quasi portal. Let's get back to Sol. Talk to the commander and uh, see if he's got any more information for us because uh, why not and I also want to try, try something out with Earth as well so here we are the planet and I'm going to quickly go to Earth uh, because I want to test something out so we could use the Hyperwave Caster on Procyon so can we use it here? can we use it here? no we can't what a shame I think it's because the Chen Jezu have like special Natural hyperwave cast uh, sensors, casters, which are a lot better. How did I not even go in there? Okay, so get uh, some fuel, I guess, or maybe we could just spend it at the Meldor Bay place anyway. So let's not get let's not get fuel. Let's just talk to the Spud Starbase Commander, Mr. Hayes. Welcome back, Captain. We have a few minerals to offload, so there you go. 
like two mineral stuff load Another there. Small load, Captain. You know, well, I suppose something doesn't really matter though, does it? Nothing. We've got so many IUs. Uh, can they analyze what I've got since my last visit? What have I got since my last visit? The analysis reads as I, don't, follows. I can't remember. Subject, aqua oh, yeah, of course. device. Data, this device is composed of a light blue super hard substance which rates Mohs 13. The object is composed of a flat ribbon of homogeneous material approximately one meter in length and it is twisted in a perfect helix. Focused ion and nucleomagnetic scans reveal little about its interior. Summary, unknown design, unknown origin, unknown function. That's the end of our scientist report. So there we are. That we was the aqua helix pretty much. So that's all we need to talk to Commander Hayes about. Most 13, that's like quite hard. That's harder than diamond even. So obviously a pretty awesome thing to have. It was pretty big as well, so some artifact. There we go. So we have uh, talked to Commander Hayes, and I think it's about time we talk to the Mel Norme again because he's got more stuff to, to tell us. So let's just uh, use our hyperwave caster and just wait around for uh, Greenish to come around. Okay, here he comes, and uh, it's time to talk to him. Welcome back, Captain. You are. Our favorite customer. Now, what can we do for you today? Okay, um, I don't think we have anything actually to sell, so let's just buy some stuff. Items would you like to buy today? And we want to buy some fuel, fuel first of all. You wish to purchase? Fill our tanks up fuel to 210. To your vessel. There we are. Right, so let's buy some information. Oh, wonderful. Captain? And, uh, yeah, so, probably gonna just keep going with the, uh, alien races, I think. So let's get some of that information. My Landro are a mostly non-solid, sentient race, who live in a gas giant at Beta Corby. We recently sold them a self-replicating exploration probe, which has somehow turned hostile and attacked everything it detects. If such encounters have angered you, Captain, please do not address your concerns to us. We possess a formal waiver of damages authorized by a Slyandro speaker and are in no way responsible for the situation. Well, there we are. So it was actually Green issue sold it to them. Wow. The cowardly Spackard live at the single planet orbiting Epsilon Groups. They do not actually live on their world, rather they reside on its airless moon. The reason? A xenomorphic species which craves the sweet flavored flesh of the Staffy has been transported to the surface of their planet and makes every attempt to devour the poor Staffy. I'm certain that the Staffy would be forever in your debt if you were to eliminate these creatures from their planet. What? You fear the alien creatures will find you a treat also? Two. Our data reveals the beasts are not interested in your species. Should you wish to consult with the Staffy Ruling Council, you will need to know the secret Staffy cipher. A password. Which is Huffy, Muffy, Guffy. Now maybe it's just me, but I'm pretty sure that's quite late in the game to be told about the Spathy from uh, Greenish there. I mean, being told about pretty much every single race in the game, Probably and then the Spathy. The just ridiculous. The Urquan slave revolt. The Urquan met to decide how to ensure their freedom. The Green Urquan, who called themselves the Kazert Zah in honor of the Urquan who triggered the revolt, wish to establish the path of now and forever, which requires that all other sentient species must become slaves of the Urquan or be forever imprisoned beneath an impenetrable force shield. Leading the opposition to this plan was Kora, a charismatic fleet officer. Kora proposed a simpler alternative, the Eternal Doctrine. 
Simply put, the scheme called for the systematic eradication of all sentient life in the universe. Aside from the Iroquois. Captain, if these positions seem to you extreme or unwarranted, you must remember that the Iroquois had been unwilling slaves for millennia, and that each of them had to remain in agony for years in order to defeat the Dinyarni. The followers of Kazetza and Kora were all on the brink of madness, but neither side would submit, and so they fought a bloody civil war. Yep, so there we go. Um, that is how the doctrines created the war. They both wanted different things, and uh, they disagreed. And uh, they just had a massive battle, which the Kazeza won, of course, and they now have the Sabatra. So there we go. Thank you very much, Greenish. And with that, I think it's time we uh, start getting some more stuff done. So, uh, at this point, we um, have got a lot of information from Mel Norme now, and we have finally, I think, started to move the mic on. You can see them moving there. Uh, they've moved out of their sphere of normal sphere of influence, and uh, I think now we should be able to go to what was it? I can't even remember what it was called. Beta Scorpi, maybe something like that. Beta Brahe, sorry. We'll go to Beta Brahe, and we should be able to now go and steal whatever's on that planet, the Shafixti saw, apparently it's going to be quite useful. So, we definitely want to go there and get it. Um, so it's going to be a pretty crucial item for us. So just while we're getting to Beta Brahe, I might as well tell you about some stuff that's coming up on the channel. Um, Joe is going to finally start a new series, he was about to start War in the North, but uh, he didn't feel like playing that in the end, so we just didn't do that. Um, but recently, the new Mist Masterpiece Edition, um, so a remake of a remake of Mist, has come out, and he's going to play that. Um, it's a really good puzzle game, and um, if you like puzzle games, then check that out. So here we are at Beta Brahe. Let's go to that Shast world. Let's find out what's going on. Hopefully, there's not an infinite fleet of ships like what happened with the Vux. Oh, okay. Make sure I land on the planet first. Green sun. Okay, let's go. Let's see what's going on. Hopefully there's only a few ships. There's definitely ships there. How many is the question? Only five. We can take these guys down. Uh, but I'm going to just save the game just in case something does happen. Um, so yeah. This is a special place filled with Jafalwap. But it is not the source. Jafalwap springs forth from 629.1 0.8. We must not allow this place to be soiled by the law. You must go now. We have business on this world, Mycon. Move aside! Jehovah flows through time and space. It cannot be stopped by mere energy blasts. However, you are not, not part of Jehovah. You can be destroyed by energy blasts. Let us demonstrate. Again, the Micon not remembering what's happened in the past between us, us and them, and uh, fortunately, it's five more ships down the drain for them. I mean, geez, they just, they just never remember, do they? I mean, they're just so overconfident, so stubborn. All about this Juffo up nonsense. I mean, what is this anyway? Um. I'm not even sure what this Juffo up is about, to be honest. It's all a bit of rubbish. It sounds like some sort of religion almost. But something they've gone a little bit, you know, crazy on. Sort of like a universal Micon religion, unlike, you know, we have just about a billion different types of religions that everyone, you know, believes in. But Micon, they definitely think that this Juffo up is definitely, you know, a secret to all life in the universe. So, I'm gonna show them that they're wrong. There's two down, no crew lost. Here comes Glob. He thinks he can do it. He thinks he can do the job, but no. There's half his crew. And the problem with the Micon thing in this game is that if they lose any crew at all, they just reheal. 
So they're pretty easy to kill because it takes up a lot of their battery to reheal. Only four men. But uh, I guess if you're against a slow ship, then. Something oh god, he just crashed into a planet as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely a really good idea to um, reheal your crew if you're against a slow ship. That's the best way to um, to play with the mic on. But he just doesn't know what he's doing. So there we go. He's down. And only one more to go. And uh, it's time to get down to uh, the planet. Find out what's going on. No, probably not that much after we kill these guys, but whatever. So, a couple more hits. Just need to get in closer range. Love this weapon. Homing 18 damage, pretty much. Or at most 18 damage. Most of the time. All just homes on the enemy. There we go. Five down! So there we are. Another 1,300 AU. AU? Are you? Um, and now, oh look at that, there's a lot of stuff on this planet, and there's also an energy signature over to the left, but, oh it's very, uh, very bumpy, but a lot of cool resources to collect. Look at that there, that's what we're looking for, what the hell is that thing? So we are experiencing minor tectonic shocks here on the surface, they seem to have passed. We, we, we bounced off the ceiling. I don't know what to call it. it, kind of looks like a cross between a spider and an antenna. We've decided to experiment with the with the artifact. Bring it aboard after I explore the surface of vicinity. Oh no, it's getting back again. Okay. So it's sort of like emitting tons of radiation apparently. Okay. So that was all for that. The sun device. Now quest that long in a game clearly means that it is going to be worth something massive and I think I know exactly what it's for. Now of course the Chenjezu are going to need a ton of light for their um, synthesis with the Myrnaherm so giving them a ton of light with this thing is definitely going to be a lot quicker than 35 years and as we've said before 35 years is too long because before then the Korra would have wiped out everything because they're going to win the doctrinal conflict at some point um, so yeah, uh, getting the sun device there, right up, right in orbit against the planet, it's going to be really good because then we can definitely make sure that the um, the Chenjezu emerge with the hybrid hybridization, um, and that means that we can destroy the Urquan a lot more easily if we have them. The Micon still moving; they still haven't seen problem with their uh, with us yet. They still, even though we just stole like apparently one of the most precious artifacts. Um, they apparently just don't care. They're still going to go to um, their new home world or, or one of their one of their new worlds that they think they're going to find. Of course, it's not going to happen. They're going to get absolutely destroyed. So here we are, back on Earth. It's January the thirteenth, twenty-one fifty-eight, and uh, wow, this game has gone for a long time. That's about how long now? Coming up to three years of game time. Wow. Okay. So let's talk to the Starbase Commander. Hello, Captain. Hello! Oh! Okay, whatever. Um, can your scientists analyze that thing that we found the on that planet? The reads as follows. Subject, sun device. Data, the unit contains a power generator whose output magnitude is simply mind-croggling. When activated, the device radiates energy equivalent to less than one one-hundredth of one percent of our sun. However, when placed close to a planet, perhaps in orbit, its output would rival Sol's. Summary, another precursor tool, the energy output of which can replace or augment a sun's radiance. That's the end of our scientist's report. Uh, how convenient. We've got something that can replicate the sun's Hello, rays. Captain. Isn't that brilliant? Isn't that just amazing that that's exactly what we need right now? That is. So, um, we pretty much didn't lose any crew there because the Micon were terrible as always. They just, they're so slow and terrible. Actually, once when we first faced them, they were quite difficult because we didn't have very good weapons. But now we've got the um, homing stuff like they do, and we're a lot quicker than them. Then we can beat them every every single time. So there we go. I think it's about time we get off to the Chen Jezu since we got the Sun Device now. That's what it's called, and we can free them, and we can start getting their awesome ships. So I'll see you next time.